All right, our great friend Senator Kevin Kramer is writing today in the Wall Street Journal. The EU goes rogue on climate policy with its carbon border adjustment mechanism. That's just old fashioned border trade wars, what that is. He joins us now. Senator Kramer, as always, sir, it's good piece, very good piece. You know, I just had this thought. Look, it's bad enough mm -hmm. there. You know, we, have, we have the lowest emissions of carbon, we have the lowest decline of carbon, as you point out in the piece. Uh, mm -hmm. We should be judged accordingly. They won't. But, you know, I think, Senator, they're, they're trying to slap back at us because all the Green New Deal legislation, especially the electric subsidies and the solar subsidies in the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, you know, which really does right. break trade deals, right. that's what they're doing. Right. They're retaliating in their own stupid way. I, I think that's exactly right. And I think President Macron made that point pretty clearly when he was here with, with uh, President Biden and a number of members of the Senate, uh, and he raised that, that unfair advantage, if you will, of those subsidies, and he's right. However, I'm not letting him off the hook quite that easily because Europe's been going down this unilateral path for some time. And during the pandemic and, and, and during the, the, um, you know, the war with Ukraine in the, in the last year between Russia and Ukraine, several of their leaders have come to my office, including the European Union's uh, Commissioner of Energy, including some of the negotiators. And I told them, if you'd slow down this CBAM thing, help us get, you know, catch up and work with you, then you'd have, uh, you know, a multi-continental, uh, you know, a, a, allegiance and alliance where we could do some trade together based on our excellence rather than on somebody else's uh, you know somebody else's mediocrity, and I just I just think that there's a, a way to do this that's, that Bob Lighthizer would be proud of, that Donald Trump would be proud of, that I think the Chamber of Commerce and 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 the Club for Growth would be be proud of, and that is an America First border adjustment mechanism that recognizes America's excellence. And Larry, to your point, we spend a lot of money. Our businesses are already disadvantaged because of our excellence, because we have higher standards, higher you know, pollution standards, obviously environmental standards, work you know, place standards, uh, obviously higher salaries and wages and, and uh, HR standards. We shouldn't be punished for that again by the European Union. Rather, they should join us. And uh, let's, let's punish the really bad guys like China and Russia. China, Russia, India, you know, they're right. producing coal. And That's I want to see if you're, the EU, I think the EU's biggest trading partner now is China. I know Germany's biggest trading partner is China. I'd like to see mm. if they're going to apply this to China. You know, I, so far we don't know if they agree. will, right? Now, you say in your piece that we should reward producers and manufacturers for the good work they already do. Right. We have high standards. But they won't do that. And there's no, you couldn't figure out how to calculate the carbon emissions or the electricity use, right? Everybody uses right. electricity. Right. You couldn't right. figure that out. You won't figure that out for 20 years. These are going to be right. arbitrary attacks on American companies. That's what's going to happen. That's right. That's right. And that's why you need some sort of a referee. And I think keep it simple, Larry. One of the things about these trade deals and Congress and this whole town in general is that we complicate simple things. But if you have a border adjustment mechanism that recognizes the most carbon intensive industries like steel and aluminum and, you know, cement and, and there, there are lots of other things, but certainly generation of, of, of energy itself, um, you know, let's pick those things that are highly intensive, have a measurement that Every American company already meets, by the way, because of our standards. And so do most European companies. So right out of the chute, you have equity that rewards our excellence and disadvantages our adversaries instead of our allies. Yeah, but you know, uh, I had a lot to do with negotiating with the EU on trade. I worked yeah, with Lighthizer. Yeah, I knew this was coming. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, can I tell you... Yeah, it gives new whatever the uh, synonyms are for impossible. <laughs> That's what I you know. have. I mean, really, I it's know. not I personal. They're very nice I people. Know. I'm sure some of them go to church even, but they are. <laughs> you cannot win with them. You cannot get a deal with them. I'm just telling you, it's impossible I to have. They I look. Know. Here's what they're doing. Now they're coming up with this border tax, uh, allegedly for uh, carbon. Um, you know, again, because they're slapping us back because of our uh, New Deal, sure. uh, Green New Deal policy. But 
They want a digital tax uh, on our big techie companies. They want right. a 15 percent minimum tax on all yep. our companies, which no one can. Again, you can't define anything. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. All they're doing is going after America. Do you know what? Unfortunately, we live in a period where the leaders of Europe go after America. It's not a hobby. Uh, it's become a full time job. Yeah. Well, it's popular politics perhaps there, but at the same time, so is low-cost energy, so is low-cost food, good politics and, and good policy. And I just think one of us has to take the first big step and find some common ground with our European allies so that we can have a friendly, you know, a friendly trade policy as opposed to acquiescing to people like, like China. I mean, there's one and a half billion people in China that eat, and as you know, better than anybody, John Hoven has beaten you up over it several times when you were in the White House. Else, I'm sure we want to sell more soybeans to China. That's all good. Yes. But, but, um, we, what we don't have is really great trade deals with our allies, and, and we need to figure, figure out a way to make sure we provide for them what they need. Remember, during this support for Ukraine and the war with Russia, um, the European Union has been asking for our help. Instead of drilling more, to, to use your language, and providing more fossil energy that they need through this cold winter, you know, we're just sort of, you know, dribbling it out a little bit here and there. And we should be meeting that demand and creating friends at the same time. What Europe should have done, Senator, is construct LNG terminals, big Indeed. terminals, right? They Indeed. should have done that. We begged them to do that. Uh, myself, uh, Rick Perry, Wilbur Ross, right. uh, uh, POTUS, President Trump, when he saw yeah. them, you know, we'd have these lunches in the cabinet uh, room. Right. They wouldn't do it. Now, there's, you know, know, some of that, okay, Spain and Portugal, yes, but then they're trying to run a pipeline, and France, Macron, won't let them through one tiny right. corner of the Pyrenees Mountains. They wouldn't allow a pipeline, right. which would have allowed LNG to flow. They have the, you know, the, um, Iberian coast there has the biggest uh, LNG terminal. It's fantastic. We could have sold them all kinds of stuff. And then we should have produced it here, right? The permitting That's bill. Right. And we should have produced it here. And we would have helped them. Instead, we didn't. So who gets help? Russia. They Russia. buy an LNG from Russia. You know this. They buy as yeah. much as they've given Putin as much money as much LNG money to Russia as they are to the Ukraine. We looked at the numbers, about 30 billion euros. Isn't that pathetic? We looked at the numbers. LNG purchases given him $30 billion, and that's about what they give to Ukraine. I mean, that's just awful. It is. Well, I just, I got in a tiff a couple of years ago with Macron and, and the fr French government over a cancellation of an LNG, large LNG contract that Engie, they're, they're one of their large uh, uh, energy companies in, in France, they canceled that in, in favor of some other gas that's much dirtier than ours, by the way, as mm. well as... Um, you know, adversarial. But all of that said, the moment that we have in front of us is an, a moment where I think we can be doing some deals if we would be meeting their needs and then putting a little extra pressure on them. And then we can get to the things that you and my two favorite Steves were talking about a little bit ago, pro-growth policies, <laughs> you know, permitting reforms that actually streamline nah. the process and yes, allow sir. us to build and produce more and deal with the supply side of this inflation problem rather than having, you know, Jerome Powell always you know, beaten down to demand because, you know, because of uh, the scarcity of money. So well, uh, we can do a lot better. Senator, if the next Republican administration in the White House, you can either be special trade rep, you'd be terrific at it, or you can be Federal Reserve Chairman. I'm good with both, whatever you want. <laughs> I'd I'm, rather be I'm a good. United States Senator and answer to you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're wonderful, as always. Great, piece, great piece in the journal today. Very, very helpful.